Hello, I'm Mimi, I'm a digital illustrator and today I'm planning my art goals for 2023 and I thought I'd invite you along in case you'd like to plan with me. I'll share a few tips that have helped me with achievable goal setting and then plan out my own goals for the year. Lots of people like to do some planning at this time of year, but if the thought of setting goals feels a bit overwhelming to you right now, then please don't feel pressured to just because lots of other people are doing it. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, but more on that later. So before I set my goals for 2023, I want to mention a few tips for setting goals that have helped me and might do the same for you. The first one is focus on what you can control. I heard someone say a couple of years ago that they think of goals separately to outcomes, where a goal is something that they want to achieve and something that they can actively work on, whereas an outcome is a result that they hope to get out of something that they've been working on but can't actually control. This totally changed how I looked at my goals because I realized that a lot of my goals had been things that I didn't have direct control over and so it didn't matter how hard I worked towards them, I was never certain that I'd be able to achieve them. And we all know that when we set goals and work really hard towards them and don't achieve them, that we feel disappointed with ourselves and unmotivated. My goals a few years ago used to be based on metrics that I couldn't control, like how many sales I would make or how many followers I would have by the end of the year. But I could have done everything in my power to achieve those numbers and still not have gotten there because I don't control social media algorithms and sometimes social media gives you a really rough ride. So now I still have outcomes that I'm working towards that are based on metrics, but they're more like milestones. And instead I try to focus my time and energy on goals that I can control. Things that will hopefully send me in the direction of the outcomes I'm hoping to achieve, but where my success isn't relying on external metrics. I make my goals things like, I want to practice my art three times a week and post it on Instagram because I know that that will help me improve my skills and increase my chances of professional illustration opportunities. Or maybe I want to create a portfolio of greeting cards and send it to five different licensing companies, because that's something that I can achieve and feel proud of, even if my portfolio gets rejected this time around. Make your goals things that you can actually do and that put you in the best possible position to achieve the outcomes you want, but where your success relies only on yourself. So when you think of something that you want to achieve, ask yourself whether you have direct control over that happening or not. If you do, then you can class it as a goal. And if you don't, then think of it as an outcome and think about what goals you can action to give yourself the best chance of achieving that outcome. For example, if you want to be earning $500 a month from your art by the end of the year but you don't have any products yet, then that can be the outcome you're working towards and your goal might be to set up an Etsy shop and list two products every month in your store. Even if you don't end up hitting that $500 a month target, if you achieve your goal of listing two products every month, then you can still congratulate yourself on achieving that goal, you will have learned lots about selling on Etsy, and you'll have a great foundation to continue growing the following year. Sometimes things take longer than we'd like them to, but if we set all of our hopes and expectations on metrics that we don't directly control, then we're really at risk of disappointment. The second tip I wanted to share with you about setting goals is prioritize what's most important to you. I'm always over ambitious with my goals because there are so many things that I would like to do and I want to do them all immediately. But obviously everything takes time and energy and we all have a finite amount of those each day so we can only do so much. That's why these days I like to group my goals into three priority categories because then I know which goals to prioritize and which ones are just nice extras if I have time left. So the highest priority goals go in my would be amazing to achieve category, my medium priority goals go in my would be great to achieve category, and my lowest priority goals go in my would be nice to achieve category. And that's normally things that aren't important but are maybe cute projects that I want to do. 
Anything that goes into the highest priority category is super important to me and it's what I'm going to be focusing most of my energy on. But when I need a break from that or when I have a bit of time, I'll work on things in the next priority category. And then if I'm procrastinating from the hard tasks or just have a bit of free time left, then I can do the little projects in my lowest priority category. This system works fairly well for me because then I don't feel like I'm ignoring anything that I want to do by just not putting it on the list at all. But also if I don't get around to it, then I don't feel bad about it because I knew it was a lower priority to begin with. And the last tip is using the SMART acronym for setting goals, which you've probably heard a lot about before at school or work because it always comes up in presentations, but it is quite useful. It's really just a set of guidelines for setting goals that are achievable. And there are a few variations of it, but the one that I usually go with stands for specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time bound. The idea is that to have goals that are clear and achievable, you wanna make sure that they are all of these things. So be specific about what your goals are. Rather than saying you want to draw more, which is quite vague, you can make it more specific by adding details and numbers to your goal, like how much you want to draw or when. If it's specific, then it's more measurable, which helps you keep track of whether you're achieving the results that you want and tracking your progress can help you stay on target. Make sure that your goal is actionable, like we were saying before, so that it's something you can actually control and work towards. You also want it to be realistic, so although it's great to be ambitious, do try to be realistic about what you can get done in the time you have available. It's great to have a challenge, but try to make it a realistic one. And lastly, it helps to have a time limit of some kind on our goals to give us a deadline to work towards. For the goals I'm planning today, the deadline is the end of the year, but it can also help to have more regular deadlines for things that you want to do often, like drawing once a week or creating something each month. I don't always use this system. Some of my goals are more general and about lifestyle, but for any that have a direct outcome that I'm aiming for, I will usually go through this checklist in my head and follow it quite loosely. So those are some things that help me set my goals. Maybe they work for you or maybe you prefer a different system because there are a thousand ways to approach planning and goal setting. Now before I plan out my goals for 2023, I want to quickly share with you an amazing resource to help you with your goals this year, which is Skillshare. I was just checking out this class by Lisa Bardot that covers the basics of Procreate and helps you get started with digital art, which is called Kickstart Your Creativity with Procreate, 20 fun drawings for beginners and beyond. She's really encouraging and it's all about removing pressure from learning art skills, which I am totally on board with. I love how many beginner friendly classes Skillshare has and they're a great online learning platform to help you learn new skills or improve on what you already know. And the new year is a perfect timing to take advantage of the one month free trial that Skillshare is offering, which gives you access to the full library of classes for one month. To help you make the most of your free trial, I've curated a list of classes that I've watched and think are really helpful. So if you're wanting to create more art, I thought that these classes are really great to help you with that through different mediums or challenges. If you're wanting to learn digital art skills, then these classes are a great place to start. And if you're wanting to build your art income, then I thought that these classes had some really great foundations. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. You can get your free trial via the link in my description. So now let's start thinking about some art and business goals for 2023. For me, the things that I think would be amazing to achieve this year are Finish my digital art course I started writing the scripts for a video course about digital art for beginners late last year and it's something that I've been wanting to create for a while now so I definitely want to finish that this year. It's a big project, but I've had lots of practice making videos and with the help of my partner Dan, who's an amazing video editor, I feel confident we can get it finished this year. I'm actually really excited to get it made and share it with you all, so I'm gonna prioritize that. Post a YouTube video every fortnight. This is what I currently do and I wanna keep that up throughout the year. I love the community here on YouTube and love sharing my journey with you all and also hearing about your own journeys down in the comments, so I really want to continue sharing. 
It also helps grow my business, so YouTube is a win-win for me and I think a video every fortnight is an achievable amount to create. An outcome or milestone of this goal would be to reach 100,000 subscribers on YouTube in 2023, which would be an amazing milestone. But like I said before, it's not really a goal that I'm tracking for myself because it's a metric I can't control. It's just something that I'm working towards. Have more work-life balance. This is not a specific or measurable goal, but it's something that generally I want to do this year because last year I really doubled down and gave this business everything I had so that I could grow it into something that I could travel with. And now this year we're going to start doing that so I want to be able to enjoy the places we travel to while also enjoying working on my art, picture books and these videos. Things that I think it would be great to achieve this year are Illustrate something just for fun once a week. When I first started drawing seriously, I would illustrate something five times a week to develop my skills. But now that I do a lot of content creating and professional illustrating, which is great, I don't have as much time for illustrating just for fun, so I want to bring more of that back in this year. It doesn't have to be much, it can just be really simple or whatever I feel inspired to make. And it has the added benefit of giving me something to post to Instagram, which helps keep my social media active too, so that ticks off two things at once. Create a short class for Skillshare. Although I'm making a large course that I'll probably host independently, I'd also like to start making short courses to put on Skillshare as classes that are more in-depth than these videos, but maybe not as full-on as a big course. Create two workbooks or PDF guides. I've had on my list for a while to make some little PDF guides on helpful topics like being consistent with your art or planning your dream art business and things like that. But I haven't yet gotten around to it so it would be great if I could do that this year. They would probably be an extension of my videos and I think if I sat down and focused on them, I could probably make two this year. It doesn't seem like a lot for something that wouldn't take me all that long to do but everything takes time and energy and when there are so many other things to create, I need to be realistic about how much time I'd really have to give to something like that that isn't a top priority. And some things that it would just be nice to achieve this year are create an advent calendar card. This is kind of a random project, but last year in the lead up to Christmas, I really wanted to make a greeting card that doubled as an advent calendar with little doors that opened and it would be nicely illustrated, but I just didn't have time. So it would be nice to be able to make that this year in 2023. And lastly, meet artist friends in real life. I'd love to meet some of my internet art friends in real life this year, especially as I'll be spending a lot of the year in Europe and I know quite a few of you are based there so it would be really fun to do some casual meetups at some point. There weren't too many of you nearby when I lived in Tasmania but I did have the pleasure of meeting up with two artist friends while I was in Tasmania and they were so lovely and it's just so nice to meet for a coffee and connect face to face. So those are my goals for 2023. I'd love to hear from you in the comments what your goals are for this year if you have anything planned. And if you enjoyed this video, then consider giving it a like and subscribe if you haven't already to see more content about being an artist. Also, if you'd like access to my drawing tutorials and monthly illustration club, then consider joining my community over on Patreon where I share lots of goodies every month. The beautiful Bluebell tier gets access to everything, including a video lesson or drawing walkthrough video every month, plus access to all of the previous ones. And you can even browse the main articles and videos that are available before you join via the Patreon page on my website. So I'll leave the links in the description below. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.